Hey there, my name's Adam and welcome back to part two of my three part Twitter marketing series in this, which I show you how to market yourself, your brand or your business properly on Twitter and grow fairly fast. This is part two of three here and I will be focusing on exactly how you should be communicating on Twitter. In the next video, we'll cover how to utilize most multimedia posts to grow fast. How should you be communicating on Twitter? Well, quickly and communicatively. You should, well, not be posting your article and video titles 24 seven. In fact, the majority of your posts should be about or in reply to other people. Twitter's a two way street. That means you need to be spending most of your time talking to and interacting with other people. It's often recommended that the bulk of your Twitter presence be replies to and retweets of other people instead of just promoting your content. That may sound counterintuitive, but people don't like following raw news feeds on Twitter. Instead, they want someone to talk to. Follow people in your niche or market and chat with them. Give them feedback. Answer their polls, retweet some of their content, reply to those who tag you, retweet relevant posts to you, and don't be afraid to take personal discussions to DMs or direct messages. Here are some useful tips for optimizing your interactions. If you want a specific reply to be shown to all your followers, put a period in front of the at symbol when replying. This shows it to everyone in their feed, whereas a direct reply would only show to those following both you and the person you're replying to. This could be useful if the information in your reply could benefit other people or creates a funny moment. Number two, consider typing your reply in a quoted retweet. This is like a retweet, only you get to add your own reply on top of it, thus showing your followers both the original tweet and your reply. This can be good for creating a bigger conversation and still interacting with those who tag you. Number three, when there is truly nothing to say in a reply to someone's tweet, but you want to acknowledge it, use Twitter's like or favorite button. This still sends a notification to that person that you engaged with their post, but you don't have to type anything. Or if you really like what someone says or says to you, like it too. If your reply is too long to fit in one tweet, consider typing it up in a notepad file or a memo and attaching a screenshot of what you typed as an image in your reply. So the whole reply can be read at once. Just make sure the text is big enough to read. You can also use a third party app called Twit Longer to basically shorten up your text and then provide a shortened link to that full post on Twit Longer. But that's less likely to see engagement given that it takes someone to an all, you know, an off Twitter site. Number five, if you're sending all of your reply via text, put a C in parentheses at the end of each reply until you get to the end to signify that post is continued. This creates a chain of replies that people see, you know, people can follow chronologically without getting lost in your text. Twitter polls are now a thing and you should be using them. No matter what, there's always a time that you can ask a question of your audience and a Twitter poll is a great way to do that. It builds engagement and can get you vital information from your followers from posts that would otherwise probably be ignored. Polls run for 24 hours and allow you to preset a few multiple choice answers. Create and post a poll, quote retweet it halfway through the day, and engage with those who reply to it with more than just a vote. Then make sure to make a post of some sort about the results of the poll. Twitter is also a continuous stream of never ending posts. This means that you should be posting very, very often. We're talking multiple times per day. For replies and interactions, post as close to the original post or tag as possible so it doesn't get lost in your followers' feeds. For purely promotional posts, consider utilizing third-party tools such as Hootsuite or Buffer to schedule out your posts in advance throughout the day to space them out and keep your page active. Lastly, you should utilize hashtags in your posts. Now, this can be a very important thing to do, but it's also very easy to overdo. Used to, the common usage of has hashtags was quite spammy. You'd have a post, let's say, I like Domino's pizza, and then there would be as many hashtags as one could fit at the end of it. But that doesn't look very good, now does it? I like Domino's pizza, hashtag pizza, hashtag young, yum, hashtag Domino's, hashtag Domino's pizza, hashtag way better than Pizza Hut, hashtag nom nom nom. It's not attractive to look at, someone, any, not something anyone wants to read, nor is it a natural use of the hashtags within your post. Instead, there should be one or two keywords or phrases that can be made into hashtags from within your post. A better tweet would be something like, I like Domino's hashtag pizza, and then maybe a photo of your pizza with it. This saves characters on your tweet and looks a lot more genuine and it's something someone might be more prone to interacting with. Last up, we need to tackle the almighty multimedia side of Twitter. We'll get into that in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to smash the like button if you enjoyed it. Stay subscribed for part three and otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.